Welcome <laughs> to, to another, another episode, episode of Driving Drive to, to the, the Res with your favorite hosts, Larry, Inelia, Larry, and Larry. <laughs> Larry. Yeah, it's easier if we say our own names. <laughs> we don't mess them oh, up. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Guaranteed to say it correctly. I thought you just wanted to say Larry, Larry, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Forget Inelia. <laughs> Funny. Yes. Good as it is. Good as it is. So let's, uh, you know, talk about our newsletter this week. Okay. Did you read this one or am I reading this one? You're going to read it. I mean, did you read it at your sub stack? Well, does it make a sound or not? That's kind of the question. (laughs) Did you make sounds on your sub stack or not this week? Yes. Okay, so next week I'm going to. Yes. Okay. Maybe you should explain what you're talking about because half the people listening won't know what you're talking about. Making sounds on your Substack. So I don't know if everyone knows what a Substack is. But if you don't know what a Substack is, it's a uh, place you go and you can read the newsletter and you can also hear it read to you. Just the text, not the commentary, none of the um, sideshow. Expansion. Yeah. We, we, we publish this newsletter on the Substack. Mm-hmm. And it's an uh, email event, of course, Substack. And uh, that's free there. Or you can uh, support the show if you like, or support the newsletter, or support the work, or support whatever it is you feel. It's there. So you can read it. You can read it and support it. You can hear it. And then if you liked what you read and you heard, you can come here, listen to the podcast, and we'll talk about the newsletter and expand on it and see where it takes us. Yes. Where and else then can people find the newsletter? You can go to the subscribe star, right? Mm-hmm. And then you can listen to us talk about the newsletter with Ilya and Adelina. On a second hour. On a second hour where they talk about what questions come up for them. Yeah. About what we talk about. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we go in pretty deep. Yeah. Where else can you get the newsletter? I'm sure that if you went to aneliabenz.com, you could just get it right straight. Yes. Emailed straight to you. Right. So... Now you know, if you didn't know. Mm. And at Substack, I think on occasion, there will be an essay. Occasionally, yes. Because that's what I was hoping for. So mm. I've been wishing <laughs> for essays, which are a long-form newsletter, in yeah. my mind. Essays are longer than a newsletter, for sure. Newsletter, you know, a page or two. Mm-hmm. Gets to the meat of the bones, or it gets to the meat on the bone. Gets, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you get nutrition. Yes. <laughs> And the essay is the bone soup. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's got to boil the bones <laughs> for a while. And, you know, it takes longer. It does, yes. So if you don't have a Substack um, subscription, which is free, you just go to Substack and type in Anelia Benz, then there it is, and you'll get uh, the notifications. Then you'll know when an essay is written. You will. So it does make a sound. That's it? That's Substack. When you push play. All right. The newsletter is, does it make a sound or not? Right. You've heard it right. A very Zen question. Does a falling tree make a sound when there is no one around to hear it? Well. Yes. In my, my older state, I would be stuck on this question thinking about, well, it takes a human to hear it to make it real Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and if there was no human there then there was no creator you know that kind of thing i get stuck in these little loops right 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 i did some research around this question it appears that the conversation was first recorded with different words in the 1800s yeah people have been talking about this question for a while (laughs) That seems almost absurd, isn't Why? it? <laughs> well, because um, I thought in the 1800s, you know, they were worried about getting food. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> or gold. Right, right. Yeah. Or uh, empire or yes. farm, land, all that stuff. But I guess they've been talking about sound even. Mm-hmm. Does it, tr- when a tree falls and there's no one around to hear it, does it make a noise? 
Well, I mean, obviously, of course. You think? Yes. I mean, why even? Ha- it's not even a question. <laughs> it's an absurdity. So anyway, let's go. Let's see where it takes us. Okay, let's see where it takes us. So let's go back to the question at hand and make it a bit more personal. What is sound? Good question. I <laughs> gotcha. Now you'll be stuck on that one for the next 30, 40, 50, 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, our generally accepted scientific, rational description of what is sound, it's uh, waves of pressure through the medium of air, which means no sound out of air. If there's no air, there's no sound. Or there uh, might be uh, sound, uh, but it doesn't move. Now you caught it. Now you caught it. <laughs> Does those waves travel only on air? No. Right? Because well, otherwise you wouldn't be able to have the sonar radars under the water. Well, or the Dolphins wouldn't be able to be able to... Okay, not just air. So it could be water. Yes. Some, far, some medium. Yes. Not including not air. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, vacuum. Not in a vacuum. Mm, I don't know anyway. Okay. Blah, blah, blahs, hits your ears, blah, blah, blahs, your brain turns it into some noise. Yes. So is it noise or is it just, or is it just vibration? Vibration. Oh, shoot. (laughs) Is it the vibrations, waves, and frequencies that originate in the forest when the tree falls? Or is it the interpretation of those inputs when they are perceived in our senses and interpreted by our minds? And the question is still, what is sound, right? Yeah. So which one is it? Is it so sound as we define it mm-hmm. mostly. Mm-hmm. It didn't. It didn't make any sound if you didn't. If you weren't there to hear it, right? Because you have to hear it in order for it to have a. The meaning of sound. Meaning of it mm-hmm. in the definition of it. Right. Sort of. It's a simple question. It's so goddamn hard. <laughs> and here's what I find interesting about this question. Is reality something external to us, or is it how we feel, think, experience, and interpret it? Here we go again. That's the deeper question. Yes. That is the actual question. And that's what we've been, honestly, kind of like struggling with in Codename We. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Silence. <laughs> it is. In a Spanish broadcast, I was sharing, um, I was sharing an experience I had as a child when this question came in. Mm-hmm. So, um, I was really small, uh, four or five years old, or something like that. And I was standing somewhere with my uh, holding an object. I think it was an object or a doorway or something. And I was trying to put my hand through it. Right. Through so, the object? Through the object. Yeah. So okay. in visuals, I would have hold, holding something and then my hand was... Tra- I was trying to get my hand through it. Right. But it wasn't working. Hmm. And one of my parents, I can't remember which one, came to me and says, what are you doing? And I explained to them, I'm trying to get my hand to come through this. And they said, no, no, you can't do that. That's solid. And your hand is solid. And they told me something about atoms. They were both physicists. (laughs) And I looked at them and I said, but I remember doing it. I've done it before and now I can't do it. And they said, oh, no, no, that's imagination. You imagined, or maybe you dreamt it. It just happened in your mind, in your head. And it didn't really happen in reality. I mean, this is the type of conversation I had with my parents when I was five, six years old, right? Anyways, or four or five. I looked at it and I thought, oh, oh, I see. So, um, so now, I can't remember how the questions went, but it was something like, um, how can you tell the difference? Something like that, right? And um, and then the conversation turned and this person told me, well, actually, everything that you perceive um, in your mind, um, it's in your mind, right? It's like all of the things that you see, perceive, and you're trying to put your hand through a solid object. 
that's the information that goes into your mind and then you interpret it and then I was like I was like wait so if that happened in my mind too then which one's real why is the other one not real and this one is if it both happened in my mind yeah. right and then it was like it turned very quickly when my what parent was whoever that was it probably my mom because it turned very quickly into God did it <laughs> right yes God decides. Or God decides like which that. one's real or not. Yeah, or something hard to like argue that. with that. Yeah, and then yeah. why, why, why? They used to scream at me after like a hundredth why, a thousandth why, yeah. or so probably. So that's when that conversation began in my own mind, and then I figured out after afterwards, especially with my brother being colorblind, that you know, and I go into a little bit of detail of that one that. It's really about perception, but it, that's where that curiosity came into my mind, because it's like, how do I know that what I perceive, see, and experience is the same as you are? Right. Maybe what I call purple, you call pink, or whatever, so, you know, we don't we, know. But we agree on a color that I see as pink, that is called pink, you might see purple, but we call it pink in your reality, so it's pink. Anyways, carry on. <laughs> it's true. It's true. My brother is colorblind. Her brother. Yes, my brother. Yeah. When we were little, I realized that there were certain colors he could not tell apart. I didn't understand this at first. I mean, who doesn't know the difference between red and green? They are very different, clearly. Mm-hmm. And a matter of fact, on a boat, on an airplane, red and green, it tells you which side of the boat or the airplane is coming at you. Wow. One okay. side on the plane side is red. I remember it. Red is the left side, also known as the port side, because they both have four letters, port and left. And red. And port wine is red. <laughs> so if you ever don't know, port wine <laughs> port wine is red, four letters, left, left side. Mm-hmm. And the other side, you're left with green. <laughs> the right side's green, starboard. starboard. Anyway, yeah, they're clearly obviously different. Your Baby. puppy. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Did you your thingy? Let's go to work. Time to go to work, Mom. Yep, time to work. Time to go to work. <laughs> but not yet. So, yeah, interpreting, it's like, you be hard to interpret the ship coming at you, right? You couldn't. You wouldn't you know, know which side is which, and yeah. it matters. It matters. It matters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One way, you got to stop. The other way, you got to mm-hmm. go. Yeah. One way is like... You give way and turn, and the other guy, other direction, the other one, you're supposed to keep going straight so the other person go around you. It's very meaningful. So if you don't, like, have these rules set up ahead of time, you mm-hmm. kind of crash it to each other pretty easily. Because you both good. turn, 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 and there's no... <laughs> and like... Anyway, so you decided to look at the world through his eyes? Yes. Wow. <laughs> and you saw a very, very different world to the one that you could see. Yes, indeed. I can only barely imagine what that would be like Hmm. i can imagine it actually quite well yeah (laughs) okay then come to work so explain what did you see i saw a very different world it looked very very different i mean did things visually did things have the same like outlines like a chair looks like a chair um yes it's just the colors of everything were different everything because i didn't know this but there's red and green in a lot of stuff, even things you wouldn't think were red and green, they have them. So there's like less um, differentiation know. between yeah, there's different, edges and there things. There were different differentiations. Because one thing that I perceived also was that he could see other colors that I couldn't. Mm, well, that makes sense. So he could see stuff that I couldn't see. And that was really interesting too. Okay. So this brought up many questions for me at the time, and I started investigating with other people after that. Mm-hmm. You would borrow into their interpretation of a viewpoint to see what they were seeing, mm-hmm. perceiving, feeling, and such. Often, this can be done with simple conversations. Yeah. You could just ask them. How are you feeling? What do you see? If you look over there, what do you see? If I look over there... What do you see? I see a power object, also known as a stump. With uh-huh. crystals on top. Right. Well, it's not really a stump. It's no, a chunk. It's a chunk, yeah. Yeah, our tree fell over. 
or one of our three trees. One tree grew, three or trees, three trees, trees grew, grew into, into one, one, and that made one of the trees very have to be a very tall tree with only a half of a trunk. Yeah. So with the slightest little boop, it over. cracked over, mm -hmm. made a very serious, loud thump, <laughs> it did. and missed our, uh, all the cars and missed. Hey, there's a puppy. Oh, there's a person with a puppy. Oh, there's Dan. <laughs> So we got a big chunk of it, and we kept it to uh, carve or do something with, and we ended up putting it in a spot yeah. full of crystals for mm -hmm. a uh, power power spot. Yeah. Anyway, so, so I see very, that. Yeah, you do. You see that. And yeah. I see the giantest molehill I've ever seen. I know. I saw that one too. <laughs> <laughs> Since I don't know what. Oh, I think it's Brad. Since Brad and Theodora moved up the hill. The moles are going nuts in our yard here in the shaman shack. The moles win. Yeah. The moles are like, yes, we won. We won. And I see a very giant old apple tree. Yes. Which is also one of a two. Mm -hmm. And the one side turned into the whole apple tree. Yeah. Full of, um, you know, mint in its winter state. Yes. We have seven million mints. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's what I see. What do you see? I saw a tree in the background. I saw the big trees in the background. Then I saw... Um, I did see the power object stamp and the mole. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of grass. Lots of grass. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't say nothing about the grass because it was like almost everything is grass. Mm -hmm. So as we have that conversation, as we have that conversation, we can see the bits that one person saw more of or was interested more in than the other. And saw as important and what yeah. you might have missed. Yeah. And in the discussion, it brings in things that you maybe didn't pay attention to. Yeah. Yep. So communications, right? Big part of seeing what the other person's seeing, seeing. what the other person's seeing. Yeah, so exactly. You, the only way it's... isn't just to borrow Ooh, in. Yeah, <laughs> you can just ask. Exactly, just ask. <laughs> so the answer that I can give to that very Zen question is the following. So you do answer it. I do answer it. Yes, I answer the Zen question. I almost feel like I shouldn't ask it or shouldn't read it. That I should make them, you know, go read it. <laughs> <laughs> Add a little bit of mystery. In you it. want the answer? You know where to go. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. They already know where to read it. Yes. They probably already did read it. Yes. They would like me to say this, mm -hmm. this part here, and mm -hmm. then hear what you have to say about okay. it. Okay. Well, let's do that then. All right. <clears throat> the answer to the question, does it make a sound or not? Are you ready? Mm-hmm. You hear a fly? I think so. <laughs> Do you hear it? No, that was my uh, my tea going on the on the table. See? No, it's a fan. Oh, you can hear a fan. I thought you said a fly. I'm stalling. <laughs> 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 it was a fly. I thought it was a fly. All right, go for it. So, does a falling tree make a sound when there's no one around to hear it? The tree creates, when it falls, a lot of changes and movements in the physical environment. These changes and movements are expressed as waves, matter changing from, or rather, matter changing form, breaks in the tree and the trees around it, changes of the environment, looks different, an animal's habitat change, etc. But these movements and changes in the environment are not necessarily perceived as sounds, unless at least one animal has ears that interpret these changes in waves as sounds. Boom. There has to be a witness with ears. No, no. There has, doesn't have to be a witness. For there to be sound. Interpreted. The changes to be interpreted as sounds, you need an ear. Yes. Whoa. But they happen. The changes happen the whether changes you're there happen, or not. But the, the vibrations vibration come out. interpreted as sound is only if there's ears to hear it. No. The vibrations come out anyways, regardless. And this travel the area regardless. But they're only but perceived as sound. Exactly. They're only perceived as sound if you have an ear and call it sound. No, you don't have to call it sound. You have an ear that interprets the sound says boom boom booms in your brain. I missed a, a sentence in here. Oh you did. It's about your mom. Again. You remember your mom when you borrowed into her her head was really noisy. Lots of dialogues happening in that mind that she barely saw the physical universe. She was very distracted with all the All the things. noise, yeah. A lot of noise in there. 
Okay, so part of part of what this all tells me mm-hmm. is that the the universe, the world, the what we interpret things as, you know, I think we're in a relationship with a body, physical body, whose skill is interpreting physical and interacting with physical yes. environment. Yes. Physical, the physical environment is real. Yes. It genuinely is there. Mm-hmm. We genuinely interact with it. Mm-hmm. But what we consider it to be is a figment of our imagination. Yes. And our imagination doesn't make it not real. Correct. And your imagination isn't not real. Mm-hmm. It's just maybe been interpreted by yourself to be something other than it is partly probably partly probably so that you can have this physical experience and me make it mean more than if it were just a dream Mm. to give it uh, importance Mm. to give it power Mm -hmm. to give it uh, impact it has repercussion Mm -hmm. these things right Mm. yeah But knowing that, how does it change? How does it change anything? Knowing what? Knowing that that's a more accurate uh, description of what's actually happening. How does it change how you interact with the world? Well, do you know? Um, Depends on the day. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) The world is there for... What you interpret it to be. Oh. Ah! <laughs> the world is what you interpret it to be. That is true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's totally true. So, can you change how you and what you interpret it to be? Yes. That's part of becoming or moving out of basically what I would consider the victim of the reality. Exactly. Mindset. A passive writer, a victim of reality, and then you become the creator of that reality and the person driving the ship of your reality. This newsletter kind of makes me want to just not say a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like sit here and think. Bask in it. <laughs> the thinking man. <laughs> Because if it is true, which, how do we prove it to be true? What is it? This interpretation. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. The one we just read? The one we just read. If it's true, Mm -hmm. how do we prove it's true? How do you unprove it? How do you prove it's not true? Yeah. God did it. (laughs) We'll help with God. If you just bring God into the equation, everything solved. Then you fix it. it So you can truth it, I suppose, and that would be the best you can do. But honestly, if you truth a thing at this fundamental level of existence, part of your truthing is going to be the truthing you want to have experienced, right? But again, I mean, you can turn the the words a little bit and you, then you'll get there you actually will get to the rules of engagement and your agreed reality and everything else time out rules mm-hmm. of engagement get it if you haven't read it just get it oh yeah it's just a class, a class. it's just a class that changes everything yes it does change everything <laughs> it's just just a class yeah and um there a little while ago you said um, so this is real and it's solid. It's really happening outside and then we get all the data and then we interpret it in our minds. Mm. However, there's no way for you to prove that statement to be true. It is an agreement for sure that yes, it is indeed an agreement. We've agreed that our shared experiences of what we call physicality, we name them real. They're solid ish, right? Mm. And unchangeable ish. Right. However, it's mostly related to our memory of it. 
or our imaginations of it in the future. Our imagination of it in the future. Right? So there's actually no way for you to change that aspect of it. And once you understand that aspect of it, your reality becomes very pliable. That was the word I was going to say is things, when you take this on board and accept it and absorb it and do your little thinketh on it, contemplate it for a minute, do its purpose, then the solidity becomes a little bit mushier. Yeah. Mushier. You yeah. actually remember things differently because the thread of reality is more dreamlike than you would like to think, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in dreams, you know, lots of irrationalities seem to happen. Mm -hmm. So it brings some of the dreamlike nature and feeling to the awareness, for it me is. anyway. Yeah. Which takes some of the sting out of it. <laughs> doesn't take the pleasure out of it. does take some of the sting out of it. Oh, good, good. That's good to know. How about for you? What about for me? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> what is for me? It's, it's always been that way for you. What? Probably. What? The, the uh, experience of that knowing, it has never been not known for you. Right. So, yes. if anything, it's like, um, Except frustration with everyone else's yes but i had to learn that i can't put my hand through the door frame or object right i couldn't put it through my because of those agreements again in this particular state of awareness that we are in and sharing at the same time there will be no hands going through solid objects until That's the agreement until such time as we change that agreement at a collective yes. level which doesn't Not collective just the person or your body that's in the room because if nobody witnesses it didn't happen it didn't happen it it, it didn't happen no it didn't happen no matter what it mm. didn't happen yeah you were sleeping you dreamed it you imagined it yeah then you could do it right what a mess <laughs> But the biggest person or the biggest co-creator that you have to work with when breaking these agreements of reality is your physical body elemental. That's the number one person that you need to work with in order to break these agreements. And how do you work with that physical body elemental? You, had a, you have a lot of talks with that physical body, a lot of them. And you, go, you get into the same page. Because... It's true. I think when I think about that, I think about the. Uh, I mean, when I was fishing, mm -hmm. I remembered the uh, coast guards and all the other. Oh my gosh! If you fall in the water, you're going to die in one or two minutes. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, I'm pretty sure those kids I was watching in the waves were playing for an hour and come out with blue lips and perfectly fine. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I think you might. Yeah. You might be talking yourself into something. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember in Ireland there was a club of people. Men and women who in the winter would uh, make a hole in the ice in the ocean yeah. and in near Dublin, north of Dublin, I think it was south of Dublin, I can't remember. And they would jump into the water. With the ice. With the ice and they yeah. swim there for, swim for a while. hour or two hours and then come out no problem. perfectly fine. A little bit blue, yeah, but that's so about blue. it. <laughs> in <laughs> Juneau, Alaska, where I grew up in Alaska, they had the polar bear club. Yeah. Oh, that's They'd it, right. They'd jump, run down to the water that's and right, jump yeah. in and go for a swim. That's it. And my, actually, my oceanography teacher he was a polar bear when we went to glacier bay he jumped in the water off the boat in his skivvies swam over to an iceberg jumped out on it <laughs> laid down on the ice come on guys it's sunny i was like come on guys give it a try <laughs> jumped in the water swam over to a different iceberg it, it, he didn't go or nothing yeah and he convinced us all that and the, uh, and we the had guard, to and the coast guard he, he would be dead yes he fell in the water he's hypothermic he's gonna die he's, gonna, he's dead i mean yeah. this is 32.1 degree water i was doing a bathymetric survey yes. of glacier bay with a little <laughs> brass torpedo with a slide gold gold slide that measured the temperature and the depth uh -huh. and it was 32 degrees <laughs> it was actual frozen water so in centigrade that would be zero degrees it was zero zero point one mm -hmm. yeah. it was solid it was as cold as you can make water mm -hmm. it's like ice in the water everywhere yeah 
It's like a glass of ice water. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. It wasn't like cold lake. It was L- literally freezing. Freezing. Yes. Yeah. And uh, all of us had to jump in. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and there was a shock the first time, but it was oh, less of a shock. One? I just did it once. Oh. I mean, it was a shock the first time. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was less of a shock, but it was also a relief. It was over. Mm-hmm. But you jump in, and the water is shockingly cold, of course. Yes. But you're not paralyzed. And I mean, I didn't even get my head wet. Oh. I took a giant jump out. Somehow, I turned around midair like a cat. <laughs> I landed in the water as my feet going... Whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> I think I got maybe up to my chest. But that was a long ways away from the boat. You walked on water? <laughs> I walked on water. <laughs> and I got out of the water and I was stood there and oh my, my body goodness. turned on its heat and it started oh, evaporating gosh. the water and it was yes. hot. I was like, well, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> but I didn't swim to an iceberg. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. But that was all about... Walking on water. <laughs> well, yeah, walking on water. <laughs> that yeah. was fun. Yeah, reality, see? Totally different to uh, another person will die within 30 seconds or whatever. So Paralyzed and just give up and sink. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So don't do it. Yeah. I mean, don't jump in ice cold water. Right. Unless you can walk on water. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> or you're a polar bear. <laughs> yes, yes. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, I'm a bit, I'm still a bit uh, discombobulated about the whole question. It was, seemed like a a nothing Simple burger person. question at the first. Like, you can answer that easy. But when you start diving into reality, it's called, you know, climbing down the rabbit hole or something. No, that's a different thing. It's not a rabbit hole. It's just an expansion of what Expansion of awareness yeah. of reality. Yeah. When you start expanding your awareness of reality, sometimes it can be uncomfortable. Is that the right word? Uncomfortable? Yeah, it feels like... Certainty is pulled out from under you. Oh, oh yes, indeed. It's like you can't even answer or answer oh, right. the simplest question. Yes, it's like, yes. where are you from? Uh, uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and yes. uh, other people start to think, you know, you're a little bit simple. You're a little bit simple. You don't even know where you're from. <laughs> so, yes. well, I think that part of Part of that is being comfortable in that space. Yes. Be a little comfortable in... Not knowing. Not knowing. It mm-hmm. isn't necessary to know. It's fine to contemplate. It's fine yeah. to have certainty uncertain. Yes. That is, uh, that is the, equivalent, the equivalent mentally of being able to jump in the ice water and not die in 30 seconds. And also, it's, it's nice, I think, also, you can get used to knowing that the only reason why you don't fall through the floor when you're walking on it is because we have an agreement that we're not going <laughs> to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's why it takes a lot of work to get the body on board, because they're very comfortable walking on the floor and not going through it. Very, very good way to sum it up. Thank yes. you, honey. You're welcome. Good job. Love you. I love you too. Hi, peepers. <laughs> yes, we love you too. Mm.